reflection. So we have three goals today. We want to introduce the ray model of light. We want to discuss the reflection of light from plane mirrors, that's just flat mirrors. And we'll also see how we use ray diagrams to determine where an image is, as well as what the image characteristics are. Okay, so we'll start here with what we call geometrical optics. That's related to this very simple model of light we call the ray model. And it's based on light that uh, just travels in a straight line until it hits something. This is sort of the laser beam model of light. You shine a laser at something, it travels uh, in a straight line through the air toward that thing. It might bounce off or go through that object, maybe going in a different straight line afterwards, but still in a straight line. So we use the ray model to uh, understand how light interacts with mirrors and lenses and how it's affected by a change of medium. So the math that's involved is based on the geometry of similar triangles, and that's why we use the name geometrical optics. When we come up with equations for mirrors and lenses, they're going to be based on the geometry of similar triangles. Okay, so let's start talking about reflection. So if you fire a tennis ball at a wall or a nice rubber ball at a wall, it might bounce off. Much is shown in this uh, set of pictures. So the surface is horizontal here, that's the dark black line. And then we usually measure our angles from the perpendicular to the surface, which is what we call the normal. So the normal is the dashed line perpendicular to the surface. So if the ball comes in at 60 degrees to the normal, it goes off on the other side at 60 degrees. Well, light does exactly the same thing. Okay, so it's a very simple idea, the law of reflection. The angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Now, objects that are uh, very flat, like uh, mirrors, then the law of reflection applies on a large scale. So you can see this in the picture. All the light comes in a particular direction, and then it all goes off obeying the law of reflection on a large scale. That's what we call specular reflection. Now, there are other objects that uh, looked flat to us, like, you know, the surface of a table, but those objects might not uh, show off a nice reflection of light. Well, why is that? Well, if you get out your microscope and you look through it, it might look like picture C down below, that on the scale of the wavelength of light, there are actually a lot of hills and valleys in that surface. might look flat to us, but to light it really doesn't. And so each ray is obeying the law of reflection, but then uh, in sort of a large scale, it does not. It sort of sends out light back in all directions. Okay, so that's what's called diffuse reflection. So if you want to spread the light out in all directions, then that's what you do. If you want to be a mirror, then you've got to be a lot flatter than that. Okay, so let's talk about plane mirrors. Plane mirrors are simply mirrors with flat surfaces. And we're going to talk about four different properties of plane mirrors, which allows us to introduce some of the jargon associated with, with mirrors as well. So we say the image produced is upright as opposed to being inverted or upside down. It is right side up. Kind of be odd if you looked in a plane mirror and saw yourself upside down. It might be difficult to brush your teeth, wouldn't it? Uh, the image is the same size as the object. That means the magnification is 1. It's not smaller or larger than the object, just the same size. The image happens to be the same distance from the mirror as the object is. We say the image distance equals the object distance. So if you're 2 meters in front of a mirror, you see an image of yourself actually 2 meters in behind the mirror. But that image is a virtual image as opposed to a real image because the light rays just look to your eye as if they come from that point, two meters behind the mirror, but no light actually gets behind the mirror. So it's virtual. The real light rays do not actually pass through the image point. And so if we held a screen up two meters in back of the mirror, we wouldn't see an image of you on the screen either. Okay, so it's a virtual image. Other times we can get real images, but not from plain mirrors. Okay, so finally, let's look at this ray diagram. And the object is the sort of yellow arrow on the left. The mirror is that big black vertical line. And then the image is this yellow thing off to the right. 
well, how do we know where the image is? Well, we draw ray diagrams. So focus on the red rays. So we've got two red rays leaving the tip of the object, striking the mirror, obeying the law of reflection. Where the two reflected rays meet is going to be where the tip of the image is. Now, we've only drawn two red rays, but we could draw like 50 more. And any red ray that meets that mirror bounces off. If you extend it back, it will pass through the tip of the image. So we've only drawn two, but you can draw as many as you want. They'll all meet there. What about the blue ones? Well, the blue ones are going from the middle of the object. And so where the reflected blue ones meet, and you have to extend them back to the other side of the mirror to get them to meet, is where the middle of the image is. And the green ones are coming off the base of the uh, object, and so the reflected green rays meet at the base of the image. Okay, so uh, often we just draw the ones from the tip of the object, but it's nice to see that, in fact, you can draw them from any point on the object. And the idea is that the image is formed where the reflected rays meet or intersect. And if they don't meet on the side of the mirror, in this case the left, where the real light rays stay, then you extend them back and they appear to come from there. That's a, a virtual image. Okay, that is all for our introduction to reflection.